Pressure in the workplace is increasing year by year. This has led to more and more stress-related claims against employers. The figures that we just see mean that we all have a duty to make sure that stress in the workplace is reduced or preferably eliminated. What we're going to do is look at what both employers and employees can do to identify and manage stress in the workplace. This program can be viewed straight through in one viewing. Or you can pause when you see the icon in the top left hand corner of your screen. There are case studies that we'll look at and they will enable you to discuss the stress issues that may be applicable to you as an individual or as a manager. Click the arrow to continue. The Health and Safety at Work Act 1974 states that employers have a general duty to ensure, so far as is reasonably practicable, the health of their employees at work. This includes taking steps to make sure they do not suffer stress-related illness as a result of their work. Employees must take reasonable care of their own health and safety and that of others who may be affected by their acts or omissions. The Management of Health and Safety at Work Regulations 1999 require the employer to assess the risks of occupational ill health. And this includes taking account of work related stress issues. Other employment legislation, such as the Sex Discrimination Act, the Regulations Act, and the Disability Discrimination Act, are all concerned with the fair treatment of people at work. Failure to comply with such legislation could place some people under further stress. So be aware that the issues surrounding these acts are in place to ensure a fair environment that doesn't isolate any individual. <coughs> The perception of stress varies between individuals and consequently isn't easily identifiable. However, the health and safety executive describes stress as the adverse reaction people have to excessive pressure or other types of demands placed on them. It can be interpreted as someone not being able to cope with pressure. So what does this mean? Stress can happen at any time and usually comes about when somebody's expectations are too high. A person thinks that they can do more than they actually can. They then realise they can't and try to hide their feelings, which inevitably build up into an inner turmoil. It's possible their workload may be too heavy, but they don't recognise it themselves and may not be able to communicate their feelings. It may even be that the workload may be too little and that they then become worried about their job prospects for the future. They may become stressed if there is a mismatch of a person's big heart, which can be quite demanding on the individual, as too can overestimating the capability of an individual. Assumptions made without basis that work upon can generate stress for those ones.
Anxiety and depression are all recognised conditions that could possibly affect anybody at any time. No one is excluded. The categories of people who can be affected are the individual, where stress can affect his or her health, which may impact on their work, and it can also extend into their family and social life. The workforce. Workforce stress has the ability to spread. Rumours, poor working practice and conditions could have the effect of a stressful environment being passed from one individual to another. This could lead to collective anxiety and a reduction in morale. The management group could be affected by more and more work and responsibility being placed directly on them. Stress in the workforce could mean replacement costs, possibly having to employ temporary staff, and having to make organisational and working practice changes. This could directly affect productivity and customer service. Finally, the organisation. The organisation itself may lose profit, business continuity, credibility and receive bad publicity. Whilst it is the individuals themselves that actually suffer the health problems associated with stress, failing to recognise it and act upon it can affect the whole organisation. It's not something you can take lightly or just brush under the carpet. Stress in the workplace will not disappear by itself. If something outside of work is causing you stress, then there is a danger that you'll take the problem into work with you, and this could affect your performance and even your safety. If you do find yourself in this situation, let your supervisor or human resources department know about it. <laughs> The Health and Safety Executive identifies seven factors that you should address when tackling work-related stress. They are the culture of the organisation. Consider working hours, staff support, communication, consultation and education. Ask yourself if you and your company carry out best practice in all of these areas. Then there's the demand that you set yourself as a company and as an individual by setting difficult deadlines, unrealistic targets, and also by taking work home. Then there are the demands of bad time management, change, poor resources, challenges, the ability to do the job, violence, and the physical environment, such as noise, temperature, and lighting. All these things can place demands on people and organisations that can lead to stress. They need to have Control. Some of the things you could consider would be to allow staff to have a say in their jobs, 
allow a variation of skills which will bring added interest and try to establish a supportive environment within your workplace. Relationships can cause stress and you can avoid this by having good interaction between management and staff, good communication, good working relationships and equal opportunities. These foster a good working environment and help reduce work-related stress. Change. Be aware that a change of workplace or working practices can be particularly stressful. Redundancy rumours and ambiguous messaging don't help either. Always try to involve people and use a timetable for action in negotiations. Encourage openness and involve people in the decision making process. What you give people to do is important. The role you give them should be clear. Job descriptions, expectations placed on staff, objectives and responsibilities should all be realistic and achievable. And support, or lack of it, can also be a factor in stress. Again, encourage dialogue, training, matching the job to a person's ability, give sufficient induction, difficult time support, give praise when deserved and don't discriminate. So let's look at those seven stress tests once again. You have to consider the culture of the organisation, the demand on the company and the individual, the control of stress, relationships, change in the organisation or to an individual, role and support. All employees should try to get a work-life balance and an annual life balance by taking holidays on a day-to-day -day basis. Make sure you take your allocated meal breaks. And talking problems through at an early stage will help to identify potential stress areas. So talk to your supervisor or manager and vice versa. Employers should talk to employees if they suspect that an individual may be experiencing stress at work. So how do you identify when an individual has had excessive demands or pressures which they've done them? Click no to continue.
identifying possible causes of workplace stress will help in avoiding excessive pressure on individuals. Thinking things through is easy advice to give, but that's what you have to do when it comes to health and safety issues. Identifying the symptoms of stress, controlling them, and putting remedies in place is essential in complying with the regulations. A risk assessment is the way we usually identify and control health and safety issues in the workplace. Assessing stress is something you can't actually do, but what you can do is assess the factors that cause stress. Identifying these factors is made easier by considering the seven issues we've already mentioned in relation to your staff and your working practices. Your risk assessment analysis will enable you to establish controls to help eliminate stress in a particular job. In order for you to control effectively, you should consider staff conditions, staff working patterns and production costs. Checking your sickness records may help you decide if there is evidence of stress related to a particular task, which may then point you to the causes of stress in an individual. Abnormal changes in these areas may mean that something is affecting that change, which means it's time for you to act. So reducing the risk is important, and the remedies can be things like making staff aware of the signs and symptoms of stress, provide training programmes, Often, stress is caused by people struggling with a task and not having the right knowledge to perform their job. Take prompt action with any problem in the workplace or when a work-related task is reported as stressful. Give support and try to understand the problem. Give time off if you think it appropriate, and when a person returns to work, they may need rehabilitation back into their job. Establish an employee assistance programme which will in itself help in promoting and maintaining good communication and consultation between the employer and employee. An effective action plan incorporating the remedies we've just mentioned will help employers identify and control work-related stress. But what about employees and individuals? How can they identify, control and remedy stress caused by their work? There are three different ways in which people show the signs of stress. The first is psychological, which is how we think and feel, and could become apparent through panic attacks, irritability, low self-esteem, mood swings, and anxiety. The second is physical, and this could show itself through palpitation, muscle tension, sweating for no apparent reason, migraine, and bursting into tears. The third area that may give suggestion of a person suffering from stress is behavioural. This may become evident through increased smoking, nervousness, seen through such things as foot tapping or clenching of fists or loss of confidence. Absenteeism may increase. Time off at regular intervals may point to the work related task that is causing stress at that particular time. A person suffering from stress may be aggressive and may also become obsessive. All of these are behavioural signs. Click no to continue. There's been an accident between junctions 5 and 6 and there's a power of 8 miles southbound of the Wiki area. In Scotland, on the end of the day, happens next with both of these drivers.
So what are the numbers learned here? Well, first and foremost, there's nothing you can do about the traffic conditions, but you can reduce the pressure on yourself if you plan your journey time, allow the delays, have your contact numbers available, be realistic concerning your circumstances, inform people as soon as you know there's a problem, apologise if necessary, and stay in control. But planning is the main point here. Good planning can make sure you're in control and help reduce the risk of finding yourself in a stressful situation. <laughs> Stress management is all about avoidance. From a manager's point of view, you should assess the factors related to a risk of stress that may be attached to any of your work-related tasks. You then need to take action, not only for the health of your employees, but also for legal, economic and ethical reasons. To summarise, you must ensure that work-related tasks must not damage the health of employees. You must take action to address stress-related problems and give support to those who have suffered. Record your findings and the actions taken. From an employee's point of view, don't allow problems to build up. Communicate. Ask yourself if there are alternative ways of working to help avoid stress and inform your supervisor or management if you think you're suffering from stress. Stress is something that should not be underestimated and using stress as an excuse to have a couple of days off work is offensive to those people who really do suffer from stress. It's both management and employees' responsibility to help eliminate stressful working practices. Everybody should be confident and satisfied with the way they perform their day-to-day -day work. And the rewards for everybody are job satisfaction and security, increased productivity and profit. Together, you can work towards creating an environment that is stress-free and a safe place to work. Click the arrow to continue. You have now completed the course content. Please click the arrow to continue.